So, um, my name is Jawul Omusomi. I'm doing great of P here at Umlazu Comtech. And the reason why I chose to do maritime economics is because I have an interest in how ships operate here in our country and how goods and goods are traded between countries. And the reason, the, another reason why I chose, I chose maritime economics is because one day I want to be a farmer, and when my business grows, I want to, I, 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 I want other countries to have access to buying the goods that I'll be providing for them, of which the maritime industry comes in hand because they'll be using ships to transport those goods and yeah, that's it. My name is Andy Denyandini. I'm in grade 12 doing maritime economics. The reason why I chose it is it was because I discovered that I actually loved the ocean and I was actually interested in mostly the animals inside, you know, yes. And then I found out that there's actually a subject here in school where you can learn about ships and the ocean. And I thought that was interesting because my world has never been opened around those, that type of world. Yes, and so when I came here, I actually found that I love it. I love how it feels like it's two separate worlds from the, the, the land and the water. And I love how it's connected to other countries too. It, 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 it opens our minds that us working like this, it, it actually says how much we as a world work, work together. It, it, it symbolizes unity, you know, yes. And I would love to be in that in, in the logistic part of it when I grow up, you know, in university. And I did want to be do, uh, I did want to do that, but you know, my father said, it's too much, it's too expensive. <laughs> but yeah, definitely for the future, I want to do that, logistics. Thank you. My name is Ogu Shantele. I'm doing grade 12, maritime economics. The main reason why I chose this subject is because uh, I have a uncle that's a captain in the shipping industry, the military part though. So I wanted to know more about ships. I used to go to Durban Harbor to visit there. So I wanted to know more and join this. Then for my future, I want to do shipping and logistics because I know how to calculate distances. I know how to operate it through, uh, operates with ships. I, I just feel comfortable with calculations and knowing which which cargo is going where just be free-minded about the other part of the world just like she said water so that's why i chose it what i find very complicated in maritime economics is sometimes the convention zones during the exam they may ask questions that may be confusing to what you already know so that's what i find challenging what I find very easy is the calculations, shipping operations, um, marine propulsion about how the ship converts from sails to motor, motor engine diesel. If they give you payment as a ship owner, they will give you there's something called a dispatch and a demerge. Dispatch is when, is when you came early and they, they, get, they pay you more money. But if it's a demerage, they will pay you less because you came in late. Yeah. Uh, I want to be in the uh, I want to be in the agricultural industry by um, I sell like food to other countries. Well, for example, maybe spinach, where, of which South Africa is rich in providing spinach, cabbage, and like citrus products like oranges, as uh, so said. And the reason why I'm um, into my retirement is because um, also always always tell his reasons because my uncle is in the maritime industry he actually works with the South African Navy and he's been telling me a lot of things about maritime that you you work you really work hard to be in the ocean so a, lo a, a lot of things happening they are interesting whereby they go to other countries and they learn new things so as I want to uh, grow my business into something big, I also want to learn new things, how things operate, as I said before. And since other countries are not reaching the minerals that we produce and the food that we have as a country, so one day I want to be the provider and be the ones that supplies those products for them. So, yeah, thank you. What I found difficult is the calculations. 
I don't want to lie. I do find them difficult. So my mind just freezes for a second. Like, what is happening? Yes. And what I do find easy is the theory, though. Like, the notes, they're easy. I can understand them. And uh, 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 I, I'm i able to ask, uh, to, to answer more questions when it comes to the theory parts, unlike the calculations. Yes. And, and the... Yeah, and that's why I don't really want to go to where she wants to go because it's still. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm really happy when you're asking us about you know trips and stuff. So when Sir came into our school, he used a very different way to teach maritime, and he even planned a trip for us. We went to the Durban Harbour. Yeah, we we went to Durban Harbour. It was. So Africa, and some well, we divided into two into two groups, and some were in the sailing, and some were in the cruise. Whereby we learned a lot of things, and the ones that went to for sailing, they actually learned a lot. So yeah, I would say it's best for Oguli to explain. And they took us to a maritime museum, whereby we learned about the ship and how things operated and they took us to the engine room. So if we it was more interesting because we saw a lot of things and we saw why in the ship they need a lot of workers and we saw the need for the captain to take care of the ship to make sure that the ship is clean. So yeah, because there are a lot of goods that are transported and like Roro good, Roro goods, right? there are cars and maybe dry bulk so we actually saw why it is so important for the for ships for some ships to transport goods whilst they are dry and why it is important for some to have ballast tankers and stuff so yeah we actually learned a lot we really appreciate our maritime teacher my experience with the trip was the sailing part yes uh I, like i said i, I love the ocean and but but it's dangerous, which I think could, could kill me, but I wouldn't mind. Yeah, I really love the ocean. So when I went out for sailing, there was like water all around me. I, I just felt like jumping, you know. But the breeze was amazing. It was calming. It was just a really breathtaking moment, and I felt alive during that moment. And I want to say that when, when I was working with people, uh, 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 it was easier because I could ask, how do you do this? And they would show me how to do it. And I'll show someone else how to do something. And it really shows that teamwork goes a long way because we were able to go to, uh, out to see the ocean and we were able to come back in as a team working together. And like I said, I do support unity at all time. And I do believe that together we can do bigger things, better things, and that things are moving because we work together, you know? Yes. So for my trip, my yeah. part was the saving part is Andile. My experience on the sailing ship, <laughs> yo, it was very funny because we first had to put on the big sail. It was very heavy. <laughs> extremely heavy but it was kind of fun because we got to know how to change interact with ropes sailing part like what they were doing in the 1960s over the <laughs> over the old wow. times yeah. yeah we got to get older experience um as she was talking about the sea breeze part oh my god it was so enjoying very comfortable but our instructor the person we were with that was like in a higher higher level that knows more about the ships. He was telling us about the different types of ships, so we got to see them much more closer. I got to see tug ships. I didn't even know that a tug ship is very huge. I thought it was very small, it was very huge. Yo, we got to see all the types of different container ships. It was very interesting, it was just an intriguing moment. If I would go back there, I would ma. Just give me that day. Just give me that day again. Yo, <laughs> it is very fun. Um, and the museum part, we got to know every type of ship, all its history. It's very fun knowing about maritime. It's a very nice industry to to join. Actually, that's why I'm very interested in joining this industry and learning more. Even though it has a lot of money, because a lot of people 
haven't seen the sense, <laughs> haven't seen the importance of marine because without marine, maybe a lot of things we wouldn't have them here in South Africa because mm. most goods are imported because we can't we can't like manufacture them ourselves. So it's very a nice subject. I would encourage a lot of people to join in. In my way, uh, to advise a teacher who wants to teach maritime economics, I would say, while well, teaching maritime, you might because a lot of people have different interests in the maritime industry. So it's best to love everything that is happening in the marine life because a lot of people know a lot of different things that are happening. So it would be a good, a good thing to actually explore the sea, to explore harbors, go to harbors with the students and teach them a lot of things, not only use the books, but also take them to the place like Durban Harbour, whereby they're going to see what is really happening in the maritime, not only by reading books or reading study guides about, about it, but also taking them to that place because there are a lot of things happening. You cannot say it all, but when they see it, it's going to come back in their minds. But if you're only explaining it to them, they only get the theory of it, not seeing it. So it's best when someone is teaching maritime, they take children to maritime trips whereby they're going to learn more and also hire someone to teach their children about maritime mostly. Maybe teach them how to sell, teach them how to start the engine of a ship. That's, those are the things we learned. So I would also be happy if another person from another school learns it because it makes maritime more easier when you're looking at it. But then reading it on the book because when you're seeing it, it's whereby even your brain starts believing in you, whereby you see things and you get motivated that, oh yeah, one day I want to do this because wow, it's so interesting. Also, like seeing the propeller of the ship, it can even change your mind because wow, when you're looking at, when you're looking at it in a book, it's so small, but when you see the actual thing, wow, it's big and the ship itself, so I would really say, not only use the books, but use the world itself. So I'd advise the teacher to advise students to teach each, teach each other. Because sometimes, yeah, peer tutoring, because sometimes, like Awoke and I, uh, some people struggle with theory, some people struggle with calculations. And so when the teacher is not around, you know, it's, I, I think that it's best for the students to divide into small groups and then teach each other because they're more comfortable, you know, with a smaller group and their peers teaching them. They're able to ask more questions and they're able to actually gain a lot of information. So that I, 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 I would encourage that and I also encourage for the visual parts too. Like maybe sometimes we don't even have to go out, uh, uh, on a trip but maybe the, the teacher can bring one part of a boat, you know, just to show us this is what we are talking about, you know. And that, and, and that can actually give us a, a visual idea of other things in the boats, that these things are not just something in, in a piece of paper, but they're actually real, you know. My advice to somebody that's going to be teaching maritime and a student is share your experience. That's the best part of maritime. If you know more, just enlighten us. Just give us the experience. Sir, just, sir one day told us about an experience. If you, you're a first time um, crew member, if you go near the equator, <laughs> they will take some trash and throw it in you while you're sleeping. <laughs> so he gave us, he gave us an experience like, so if you're a new crew member, you have to be aware that some, something may happen. They do a lot of fun things. So sharing your experience may, may enlighten your students that, you know what, there is a better future in this. Mm. Yeah. So another thing, you talked about 20 years to come. In my 20 years to come, I would love to have a wine firm, a winery because I want, I love making wine, because I, I used to notice the smell, the grapes, it's all interesting, harvesting, all that things. And like, I would like to share with the whole world, I want to know how it feels having your own wine, only having your own business. 
that's why I would like to join the maritime sector so I can know so I can know if I can trade my own product with the world. Another thing would be having a estate, being an estate agent, land property. I would love to build places for students, like residents, because not everyone gets accommodation from universities. So that would be another goal of mine. Not just a goal, it's a big dream that I'm going to make sure I'm, it's going to happen about sharing your experience because when Seth told, told us about his experience it really enlightened me and encouraged me. I imagined myself going through the, the, those moments you know and what I would like to be by 20 years time well I would have to I would have loved that well I have a family and on top of that I have a, a, a very functioning business. Yes, I want to focus more on the giving part, you know. It's more like giving an opportunity to someone, giving someone an opportunity to get back in their lives. I've always wondered about the homeless people, like the ones who are literally living on the road, if they want to, it, like what, what, what would they do if they were given the opportunity? Because I don't, I, I don't think they were all rejected, you know. I think that it's just 2% they will just take the chance and actually make something out of their lives. And I want to do that. I want to help them do that. I don't know how yet, but I'm going to get there. <laughs> As I already said, I want to you know, have my own farm. So I already started doing it, of which um, I, plant food, I, like, I plant food like spinach and sell it to my neighbors. So. I already started it. So in 20 years to come, I, I wish and I'm praying that my dream comes true. Because doing that would really uh, minimize the percentage of unemployment here in South Africa because we have a very high rate of unemployment here. And each year the rate grows. So I've noticed since I'm doing economics also. So yeah, I've noticed and giving back to the homeless is also a part of my life plan because it is important and not all of them are rejected and stuff as Andile said but some of them were not given the chance so if you give them the chance surely they would do something with it surely they would have something that they can do for the world also and the maritime industry has taught me a lot, so it's a whole world in one place, basically. So in 20 years to come, I would be really happy to be given the opportunity. Actually, I would work so hard that I, that I, I want to work so hard that I get confident that I'm surely going to get the opportunity to do what I want to do. So, yeah, I would advise a person who is interested in the sea to choose maritime because you get to do a lot of things in the maritime industry. So, for example, you you guys remember the the solace, the the, the solace, the one the one that spoke about the safety of life at sea. There's a lot of things you can do in the maritime industry. So, mostly when you're interested in the ocean itself, you can even do that in the maritime, yeah, it's marine science, whereby you learn about what is going to happen when there's an oil spill and who is to be called when there's an oil spill and how to prevent water pollution in the sea. So there's actually a lot of things that have been happening around, like there's air pollution or air pollution I go, air pollution will also lead to water pollution as there will be raining. So as that happens, as and as time goes on, there are a lot of ways that people, actually the one, the creator of ships do, that as Ogushe said in the beginning, that before there was sail ships and coal ships. So as time goes on, they are using like more environmentally friendly products like fuel firstly and they are actually building a nuclear powered 
engine now, so that's what we know. And that's what Sir told us, and we actually made our investigation and we found out that it is true. Yeah. Yes, and um, what I would really like, though, is to have an experience. And I forgot this. By 20 years, I would love to have a story about how it was in the marine world and also encourage people to go there because I'm 110% sure that I would enjoy it, you know. I'm 110% sure I would enjoy it and I know that people would enjoy it too, just to have an experience. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people to just be open-minded when it comes to going to the ocean. It's not that scary. You're not, you're not gonna die. There's mm -hmm. lifeguards everywhere, <laughs> you know. I just love to encourage people to do that.